Thank you. Welcome. Um, it's a pleasure to give one of the first talks of the conference day to day. My name is Bernd Rücker. I want to talk a bit about open source workflows, business rules and case management. Um, first question of the day for me always interesting. Who is already who already knows BPMN as a standard, which is quite the most of you, which is amazing. Great. Um, always interesting for me. Um, to get an idea. So who am I? I'm Bernd Rücker. I'm one of the f two founders of Camunda. I'm basically doing workflow all my life. I started with JBPM 2 and 3 like 12 years ago. And I have a background in the uh, Java Enterprise stuff. So I wrote an EJB book um, uh, quite a while ago. And I wrote that um, lovely real life BPMN book as well. Um, we have couple of copies at the booth, so if you if you want to grab one, if you're interested, you can get one at our booth. And Camunda, we are an open source BPM vendor, so we're making a BPM platform. Um, we're based in Berlin, we have a subsidiary in, um, um, in San Francisco. Uh, we're currently approximately 40 people, and what is, which is always interesting as an open source company, we are not venture capital based, so we are basically growing sustainably, um, which is I think a big difference in how the company behaves, so um, that might be might be interesting for a couple of you. So if you have any question about that, um, let me know or talk to me later. I'm here till tomorrow, um, around lunchtime maybe. Um, yeah, what Camunda BPM is, I, I will show you later on in the demo. So first question was, what is a business process? The, um, I, a lot of you raised the hand who is already knowing BPMN. So just a quick overview of what we have here. So this is a, the typical example of a process, right? The vacation request. So you want to go on a vacation. Um, that kicks off maybe a BPMN process with a start event. So um, that kicks off the process instance. We're talking about instances. Then that moves on. There are a couple of task types, for example, a user task. So somebody, maybe your boss, should approve that vacation, and then you write data to the process instance. We call that process variables. And based on that variables, we can decide here with a so-called uh, gateway, XOR gateway, either we go that path or the other path. And then we have, for example, a service task, which directly automatically sends a rejection email, for example, or um, does some other stuff. And then we end up in an end event, and the process instance is ended. Right. So that's a BPMN process. Um, I will show you that later on in demo with a more complex example. Um, in the background, that's always an XML. And we have an engine which it can basically interpret that XML and run process instances through that. Okay. So that's a very brief introduction into a business process. Um, no, I shouldn't get that nervous. I, she makes photos of me. Um, this is actually what we see in real life. So this is not a real life example, the vacation request. Even if that's the example you always see, this is more a real life example. That's a credit card issuing process from a German um, banking company. So basically, and what you can see here is um, the so-called pool at the very top is basically you. So the customer maybe wants a credit card and then you enter some form in the web, for example, and you, you want to get your credit card, you make the application, and then this ripples through a couple of systems until you end up in a process which is really automated on, in this case, Camunda BPM on the process engine, on the workflow engine. And then you see there's a, a quite a huge process automated there, which does a lot of automated steps like fraud checking, validation, entering that into a couple of systems. Um, but also like what we call human task management. So a couple of things are really delegated to a user like a four eyes principle or doing some additional checks. And then in the end, um, it's handed over to basically to producing um, the credit card. And then this is shipped to you via um, 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 snail mail basically. And then which is basically makes a good process. It starts at the customer and it ends at the customer. And so this is, bit more realistic view on that. We have um, a lot of these core processes automated on the technology and using BPMN, so from different industries. So this is banking. We have a lot of customers in the insurance space. So if you want to want to have an insurance application or you want to have claim handling, that's a typical example. Or in the telecommunication industry, if you want to you have a new mobile phone or a SIM card sending over or a new flat line or whatever you want to have, these kind of things and so on, so on. So there are a lot of examples for these kind of core processes. Um, for most companies out there, um, that's actually really important to get that right because it's about 
um, what we call scaling the company. So if you automate processes, you're able to grow really large because most of you can see that most of the process is basically completely automated. Okay, so if you do that, you can handle much more customers with the same company than if you do a lot of manual work. And at least in the banking industry, I know that there's a lot of manual work still done. So that's important um, to keep track and being able to scale your company. A good example is Zalando. Zalando is a reference customer as well. So you m do you know Zalando? It's for... Uh, Oh, most of you, okay. Which is interesting because for, for IT guys, it's not very... Ask your wife or your girlfriend. She might know it's, it's about clothing and shoes. And they're expanding all over the world. So it's worldwide. You can, can order stuff at Zalando. And every order process you kick off, as soon as you place an order, that's handled by a Camunda BPM process instance. And that, for them, it's important because they're growing very fast. They're changing, adjusting the processes um, very fast as well. They have to adjust that to the growing company. So um, then it's important to have this, this picture of how the process looks like in order to be able to see where you want to change something, where that influences the process, how to improve that in order to handle the growth. So that's one of the examples why that definitely makes sense to, to have these business processes. And if you look at the um, current customers or, or current companies out there, um, not yet customers, so um, how do they implement processes? What you see out there a lot is like they're coding it. In various forms, you code your own process engine like a state machine or you're coding like an order table where you have like a uh, order state attribute, which, which is an integer, which, which basically decodes in what state the current order is, or, or a lot of these things. And the problem is, or, or you hard code the whole stuff into Java code or whatever it is. And the problem is you don't see that process. And you're normally not able to change it because if you want to change it, you have to understand how it works today. And that's pretty hard to do in, in, in current code. So that slows you down. And that normally is a, is a big problem. And um, if you remember, we're currently in 2015. So um, coding processes hard-coded or doing your own process engine doesn't make any sense um, from my perspective. Um, the problem is that, that, yeah, you're missing transparency, right? So um, you're looking at, at, at one part of your system, or even if you're doing very modern stuff, like with microservices, we have an interesting um, discussion currently going on. Does BPM, BPMN play a role in the microservice world, and I think it's, it pretty much does, because if you if you look in even at like small microservices, and they're doing stuff here and there, and the overall process is nowhere shown or nowhere visualized, you, you're just missing transparency. So that's what it's all about. Um, I'm getting to the demo in a minute. Don't I'm just making the introduction round. Um, so. Um, if you look at the transparency part, it might be in the development. So that's something we tackle very much, actually. How do we handle requirements management? How do we handle the um, giving the BPM and process model from a business analyst to the development? Um, then on a, like a definition level, how to see how that operates. Do we have bottlenecks? Do it behaves like I think it should? Do we meet the SLA, which is... Um, um, defined for the process and these kind of things. And a lot of instance-related transparency. That, that's like um, you're as a customer calling the company, where is my application? What is the current state? And depending on the answer, you know how good they are at um, um, basically at BPM. Okay. If you look at the whole BPM topic, there are currently three, or at least from my point of view, there are three really relevant standards you should have a look at. So the first is BPMN. So I think like 70% raised their hand, you already know BPMN, which is pretty good. That's for workflows. Um, I have an example in a minute. Um, you see that's already a pretty uh, mature standard. We have a second standard, which is called case management model indentation, CMMN. Anybody knows that actually? Which are two, three, four, five people, I think. Not that much. It's pretty new as well. Um, i show you an example later. The idea is with BPMN, you always have a very strict ordering of activities, so activity A, then B. And if you have want to have more flexibility um, where the human in front of the computer can decide what he want to do, then CMMN might be interesting for you. It's from the OMG as well. And we have DMN, which is very new, actually brand new. Um, 
So that's decision model and notation. It's about business rules. I show you that in a minute as well. And what is in common for all of them is that you not only model it graphically. So the BPMN model I showed you in the background always have um, the XML file format. So you can save it as an XML file. You that's standardized, so you can even use different tools. And you can execute that on an engine. So the standard defines how to execute that on an, on an engine. So even if you're not using Kamunda BPM, if you find reasons for that, um, you still can use BPM and CMM and DMN. Makes a lot of sense, actually. OK. So I try to be always quick um, with the demo, actually. So and what I want to do today as a demo is um, basically making an insurance application. So that's normally um, what all people here can can at least um, know from from home. So let's say you want to want to change the car insurance. Um, I want to have a new car insurance and I want to have, let's say I want to have a Porsche um, 911. That's OK. And I want to have that. I'm male. Um, so that's the end user perspective. This is basically a hard coded HTML page. There's nothing special about Kamunda on there. Um, but what happens when I, when I click on Apply, it's basically um, it calls a REST service in the background. And that kicks off a process instance in our um, tooling, so in um, the Kamunda engine. I come back to a couple of architecture things later on. So what I can see here, for example, Cockpit is our um, application for the operator. So um, um, we can see what's going on in our engine here. So for example, I have that insurance application. I can have a look at the process definition. So I see all instances which are currently running. In my case, I only have the one I just kicked off. And this is currently um, in the decide about application user task. Um, why is it there? Um, you see the model now. I, I kicked out the process instance. And this is something which is called the business rule task in BPMN. The business rule task can be connected directly to DMN. So there's a um, rule table, um, a decision table in the background. I'll show you that in a minute, which basically um, is responsible to, to get a risk um, evaluation. So in my case, um, the Porsche seems to be a medium risk. Um, that's why I actually choose it. If I choose a um, um, Volkswagen, it, uh, it would be green for me. Um, so I choose the Porsche. And that means I just go that way. Um, what you can do here, that's a lot what I said earlier about transparency. I can look in the process instance, in the single instance. I can see the data attached to it. So I have some um, insurance application, which is here serialized as a JSON, for example. I have my risks, which are just um, um, found by the um, um, DMN. And a couple of other things. Um, I could even like modify the stuff, like moving the token and these kind of things. Don't want to do that at the moment. But there are a lot of things possible here. Um, and I want to switch actually um, hats now. So um, let's assume for a minute um, we are now the um, basically the clerk who works on the applications. So I can switch applications for um, for now I'm in the so-called task list so that's the end user interface we have um, so you can see for example all tasks so these are a couple of filters I could configure them I haven't done that much for this demo um, so I have um, again this user task we visualize the BPMN again so we can see where he is in the overall process and we have a form um, for him in order to do that task what you can see here, um, all the applications we have are HTML5, AngularJS, um, so, um, and the rest using our own REST um, interface in the background. And you can embed um, HTML forms here. So um, there are easy ways to automatically generate forms if you want to do a rapid prototyping, or you can embed HTML forms using JavaScript and these kind of things. And for example, I claim that task that I want to do it. And I see again the stuff. I see the risk which is found. And now I can basically decide if I want to accept or reject them. Actually, who knows me is uh, I'm, I'm, I'm quite an quite a ecological guy. So I don't want to have that Porsche anyway. So I reject that for the moment. I complete it. And so my task is done. And if I go back, sorry, f in cockpit and I refresh here, um, what it tells me is that the process instance um, has ended already. And so I can switch 
um, to the history view and I see exactly the path which was taken for that process instance. Um, you also see the timestamps and these kind of things. So in the background, such an engine always writes writes history data, like audit logs and these kind of things. So I see, again, a lot of transparency I have um, within here. Um, yeah, so far so good. Maybe if I'm already here and we're talking about transparency, what's interesting as well, maybe having a look at um, a couple of reporting features. So for example, um, that's actually a, um, a plugin I built. Um, so it's not, not part of the out-of-the-box cockpit, but you can easily plug in your own um, plugins. <laughs> um, and this, for example, shows a couple of KPIs I modeled in the process. So um, the message here is that because we write all the audit data, it's very easy to access them and to use them in order to, for example, show a couple of different things um, to like business user or, or decision makers and um, to support that decision. Um, how to b maybe improve the process. Um, we out of the box ship, for example, um, a so-called heat map. So you can directly, computer's a bit slow at the moment actually. Um, so you can directly show um, how the most majority of the processes, um, which path they take. So I see most of them are currently <coughs> directly um, um, issued, which is maybe a good thing for the, um, for the insurance company. Okay, so there are a lot of things you can see in here. Um, if we move to the um, DMN part, so taking that decision, um, what you can already see, um, the first thing is we're currently implementing DMN. You saw it on the slides, the pretty new standard, and we're currently implementing that. So what you can see here, if you, um, should be big enough maybe, yeah, it's an alpha two. So I'm currently showing you the alpha version of the upcoming 7.4 release, which will be released in end of November, so end of this month. Um, then we will have DMN support within the engine. But you can s already see it in the preview. So for example, I can see in cockpit, not only process instances, but also the process uh, the decision definitions, for example. So I see my risk assessment um, decision table. And this is actually what DMN defines um, the most in interesting thing for the moment for execution are decision tables. And the decision table is um, are, yeah, basically very easy. You have a couple of input data fields. So these are the um, light green columns and you have output. So for example, I say if I'm, um, and then you have expression language, what you can see here. So for example, I have, um, I relate in this case to process variables because I called that from a process instance so I can directly reference um, process variables like the application. And if you remember that, let's quickly um, recap that. So if I go to the variables, um, where is the application? There it is. So there you have, for example, um, the applicant and this has some age. So I can directly access that and say, okay, if he's um, younger than 21, um, he's a beginner and he always gets a risk, these kind of things. Um, so that's basically what DMN can do. i show you a couple of more things in a minute. And um, what you can also see is that we write a history for the decisions as well. So um, we see all the decisions taken in, 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 in the past, um, we see the input data and we see the output data. So what was basically the risk? Um, we're currently working on that. We are improving the, um, yeah, basically the um, display options. So you're, we're currently um, playing around with showing all the stuff on the table directly. So you don't have that ugly table um, below. So it should be should be nicer actually in the 7.4 release. Um, but cur we're currently working on that. Okay. So far, that was a very very quick overview. Um, so the other interesting question is, what do I have to do in order to get that running, what I showed you? So the first thing um, is that um, we always, what we call a developer-friendly engine, so we always embed in the Java space. So for, for me, what I have here, and actually you can find the example I showed you on GitHub, so you can play around it with, um, with it yourself. Just make sure you use a alpha 2, otherwise DMN will not work. 
And this is a normal Java project. It's a Maven project. Uh, there are embedded the um, BPMN file, so that's the insurance application we saw earlier. Um, we have an Eclipse plugin, that's what you can see here, so you can um, model or, or edit everything directly in Eclipse. Um, if you're not really happy with the usability in Eclipse, which um, at least we are not, um, we're offering a second alternative. Um, we um, developed that over the last one and a half years, and it's pretty cool by now, and we released that in November as well which is a browser-based modeler. First of it, it's a browser-based modeler, so you can directly check that out if you want to. So go to demo bpmn.io, and then you can directly model um, browser-based. Um, thing is, because I got asked earlier today, we don't send any data to us. So if you model there, it will be completely in the browser, right? So um, we don't send it to us. We would be interested in your models, but we don't do it. It's everything browser-based. and. Um, this is from the usability, much nicer actually than the Eclipse plugin. And we offer um, the so called Camunla, which is a standalone version of that, um, where you can see that you can um, edit all the properties you need and these kind of th things. So um, there are basically both options. You can use either the Eclipse plugin or um, the so called Camunla modeler in order to model um, 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 BPMN. Um, for DMN, we're um, providing only that um, um, Camunda modeler, so only the web-based modeling part. We don't have an Eclipse plugin and we don't plan to build one um, for DMN. So if you have the um, 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 DMN XML within here, you just open it up in the um, Camunda modeler and then you're happy uh, or, or ready to go to model the stuff um, in here. Um, we can maybe show you that example here. So same thing, there's a URL where you can try it out. And then you can, um, for example, uh, whatever, add rules or add columns and these kind of things. We're um, planning to improve the usability of that thing in December. So after the release, we, are, we will improve the modeler. Um, currently, we are pretty busy to get the um, release done. So um, that's something we will, we will improve in December. OK, that's about um, the DMN part, the modeling part, the tooling part. Um, yeah, I think maybe we do uh, with that audience, it's uh, easier to do the questions at the end. So that was a quick demo. Maybe we have a couple of more code later on. Let's see. So that was the um, BPMN file. That might not be so hard to, to get. So I started the application. I uh, did the DMN check. I um, With the result, I, I went into the manual decision, and then I um, reported in my case, reported the rejection. That might be interesting to have a quick look at. So if you, for example, um, where is it? There. If you go to that um, service task, what you can see is I attached a Java class. So in my case, I just do a logging. <laughs> so I don't do much, actually. And with a send rejection, that might be a bit trickier because I send an email. And what I do, I attach Java classes. And um, if you look at the Java classes, they are actually pretty straightforward. So um, what you can do in the easiest case is to, um, to use the Java delegate interface from us in that case. And then if the process instance moves through that, um, it calls the execute method. And then um, you could even use CDI or um, 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 Spring in order to give it a name. And then you can refer to that with a bean name if you prefer that. Um, um, and there are a couple of options in there. But you can see that it's pretty, pretty straightforward uh, to, to attach code. And for example, for the um, decision here, accept, acceptance or approval, I just used an expression on the outgoing path in order to decide if I go that path or not. That's um, Joule, Java Unified Expression Language, so Java again. And that's actually um, the same what we use in um, DMN. So if you look at DMN, in all the places, like in the expressions here or there, um, you could use Joule as well. So you can even call like Spring Beans or, or CDI Beans there. Um, and we're currently um, building in um, what's um, defined in DMN as well, which is called Feel, which is quite a cool thing. It's friendly enough expression language. What they mean is um, business friendly enough, so um, should be readable by business users. So there you could do something like if the sum is between 10 and 1000 and 1000 is not included or something like that. So that would be a field expression. So that will be possible to use within DMN and um, the process instances. Okay. 
So if you're interested in more um, technical details, the best is to, um, to get over to our booth, to ask us questions, to check out the um, stuff yourself at GitHub and these kind of things. So that was the BPMN part. I showed you um, the DP DMN part as well. So that's um, pretty interesting as well. Let me add one more thing about DMN. Um, so what I learned about DMN, actually, I um, looked into a lot of DMN over the year. And what I learned from there is that um, there's a lot of um, a lot of methodology actually going on around um, rules for quite a time. So um, if you look at something which is called the decision model, that one, um, which is quite an interesting book to have a look at. Um, what they describe, that's a consulting company in the US and they're doing a lot of um, rules assignment there. And they're modeling a lot of decisions in terms of um, decision tables. And that was somehow surprising to me. So, um, so far, all the problems we saw there, we could really translate very easily into decision tables. So no need for trees or no need for a rule language for most of the problems. And tables, and that's a great thing about it, they're always readable by business users. They are always understandable very easily. So um, I'm really looking forward to, to, to making more experience with that. So if you're, if you're having a DMN problem, I'm happy to, to, to discuss that maybe later on. Um, because we're currently searching for, for, um, for more pilot projects, we have like five to 10 customers currently already doing something with that. But I, I would like to have more actually to get more experiences. And then if you look at the DMN tables, you can even do a lot of more stuff, which I don't have the time to show. But just to make one example, so you cannot only um, say there will be one row firing, which would be unique, but you can also say there might be multiple rows for firing, use the first one, or you can define a priority. Um, you can say, I don't care which fires. Um, you can use the collect, which is interesting. I did that for the risks. So um, there's maybe not only one risk. Uh, wait a second, where is it here? So there might be multiple risks, right? If I'm 20 and I want to go for a Porsche, I have two risks and these kind of things. So um, this is why I have the C. And everything I show you there is defined in the standard. So it's not a Camunda invention. We are building the engine, so you can execute it on the Camunda BPM part, but we are not um, it's not, not like a proprietary Camunda thing. Um, okay. If you want to use the DMN stuff, if you want to want to start playing around with it, which I only can motivate to do, um, the easiest thing to do in the first place, I call it decision starter here, um, is to use it in a stateless manner. So for example, you can have something like um, a, yeah, basically we called it a DMN engine, the decision engine, which is a quite easy thing. So there's nothing in the background. We don't need a database. We don't need nothing. So um, just build it. And then, for example, you can parse um, the DMN part, so that the XML, and you get a um, decision definition. And then you can directly use that in order to make a decision and you just pass in um, data like variables, which is what you can see here, which is a very easy map, like string object map. You pass in the data and you get a result. And this, for example, contains the risk. So if I'm 25, I have my BMW. Um, let's check what we should get. So if I have my 25, BMW should be young and fast and high value ve vehicle. So I have two risks, actually. So let's check that. So we should have two risks. Let's do that. Don't want to save that, I guess. OK, so that works, actually. So if I change that to um, like, a, um, 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 what else do I have? Like, a, I want to have a smaller BMW. I'm sorry, I'm German, so I have to use German cars. Um, so I have. I think I get an error now because I only have one risk. Um, just quickly check that. Yeah. So they th don't have a second risk. So I just have one. Um, thing is, it's very easy, actually, very straightforward to use that. That's the message here. And you don't have to use that in, in the infrastructure. There is the possibility to use 
um, DMN within the what we call the BPM platform. So then you have the whole Camunda platform, you have a database, because that means we can version the decision definitions. So you saw that in cockpit, like um, there we have um, versions of that. So if you change it, um, you will keep track of the versions and you will always know which decision you made, which was which which version. <laughs> and um, then you have all the history of the decisions you made. So that's basically the decision you have to make if you want to use it with all the history and the capabilities or not, right? So, but you can use it in a very, very small um, environment already. Okay, so that's um, basically about DMN. Um, if you ask me, I think DMN will have quite a, quite a bright future. I um, maybe motivate that in a minute in more depth. If you look at rules, what we definitely do not recommend is, uh, is model them in the BPMN processes. So we see actually a lot of that out there. So the people now have BPMN, they, they have it graphically, they think, okay, that, that's nice because the business can read it, so I model that in BPMN. And then you get these kind of um, 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 process models. So for example, if you, if you have to make the decisions what to cook in order to, um, depending on the guests you have, um, it will already get quite complex. And thing is, if you, if, you, if you do that with DMN, it gets much, much more easy. And normally the process model gets much, much more easy as well, and much more stable. So thing is, separate the two concerns. That makes very, very much sense. If you're interested in all the details, we have a tutorial already online. You can check that out. Um, um, yeah, don't, don't mix that up. Um, if you look at that, um, the, the it's very different frequency of changes um, what you do with the processes. So if you look at the processes out there in the companies, they really rarely change. So the overall process is normally very stable because it's a lot of effort to change. You have change management in your company, you have effort for development going on. So processes are not changed that often. Even if you have the capability with the BPMN to make it easier, they are not changed that often. The same goes actually for the rule structure. The rule structure, like the columns you have, the expressions you have to define in order to make it work, they don't change that often. And so um, that normally involves um, um, development. So what we currently envision there, and you can see that on the um, uh, modeler, um, you can always hide the technical details. So the gray stuff is basically the definition, so that's done by development. But what we already achieved in a couple of projects is that the actual rules, so the, the, the rows in the table, are really edited or, or at least approved by the business. So that's actually what you can achieve here and what is really possible to do. Uh, we had a couple of projects already who do, who do that, for example, if you take the other way around, if you want to get rid of your insurance. Um, they normally have... Um, kind of a limit, like four days after the real um, date you had to cancel that, they allow it still because they are user friendly. And in times they really have a high load on their, on their um, clerks, they extend that period like to 10 days or 14 days. Okay, so um, that's very easy to change in these kind of tables. Um, yeah, so. The um, most interesting question nowadays is, but uh, rules engines are new, right? So there are a lot of rule engines out there. There's Druils as an open source rule engine. Um, why don't you use that? Or, or why did you write your own um, rule solution or your own engine? Um, and we did, okay? Th so that's completely written from scratch. Um, we, we made a, a, like a questionnaire earlier this year. Um, how happy are you with your current business rule solution? And that was really interesting to get all the answers. We had around 45 answers, so with a lot of detailed um, information in there. But the most interesting thing was like, all, basically all of them, like 63% are really unhappy with the current um, situation. And the solution they had were ranging from a business rule engine, an existing one, um, over um, hard-coded business rules or non-rules at all, basically. Um, and if you looked at the figures of the um, people using a business rule engine, the number of unhappy users were even higher. 
So, um, and from my perspective that, um, I, I mean, I was um, JBoss contractor a couple of years ago, so I gave a lot of um, JBoss ESB, JBPM, and um, Jules trainings. And I think the problem is that the rule engines, so not only tools, a lot of them are, are basically based on theories like um, Reti algorithm, um, what Prolog does, and a lot of the things, which is quite complex. And they tried to solve a problem where they said, I have a whole huge bunch of um, facts of objects, and I want to match a huge um, amount of rules for that very efficiently. So there you need a lot of um, theoretical stuff. And that makes it complex. That makes very complex rule engines. And what we see out there are very easy rules, like a couple of lines. And I hand in one application, and I want to get a result. I just want to have the business IT alignment, the transparency stuff. I want to read it from a business perspective. And therefore, the current solutions are not really um, suitable. And that's actually why we decided to write it from scratch. And um, currently, the DMN standard is out for uh, a couple of months. And we are OMG member. We are contributing to the standard. So we basically base it on DMN. And then you can really do complex stuff, which is quite interesting. So that's um, an example I see out there quite often. It's like um, skill-based routing. You want to route the task to the right people. And the right people is not that easy to make the decision because that involves like um, we had that. That's from a um, basically from a real life example. So we had that, um, uh, for example, a couple of exceptional cases like very important customers, big partners. They have special agents which work on them. Um, then you need normally de to decide the required roles. Um, that's more or less a hard decision most of the time. So these roles are allowed to do that or not. Um, then you have to check all employees which are um, which fit to that roles and are currently available. They're not on vacation, not on leave or whatever. And then um, it gets weaker. The next decision is very weak because you want to score the best of them. So now you have a pool of possible options and now you want to score which one really should do it. And there we did like a scoring model on DMN, which basically um, incorporates a lot of the um, inputs like is it in the same region? So they normally want to want to handle that regional. So if you're in an, an, an Antwerp, normally the Antwerp office should handle it. Um, but if that's really packed, uh, maybe Brussels could do that as well. Um, like the um, um, yeah the experience of the employee and that and so on so on. Okay, um, experience of the employee was interesting because they didn't have that information. They didn't have the information, what is the experience of the employee, but they had in the host, in COBOL, <laughs> which is always nice, and they have a thing of a approval authority. They have this guy, is, um, he um, is allowed to approve like up to 1,000 euros or up to 5,000 euros, because this is a hard limit they, they added there, and they translated that by a small table into experience. Okay, and these kind of things. So you can make a lot of these um, um, decision uh, decisions really fitting together pretty nicely. And yeah, we currently build, uh, or in this case, we build a BPMN project in order to what I call a decision flow in order to make that in a in a row um, something um, interesting as well. Um, thing is, again, I want to extract the whole flow from my um, from my BPMN, which is really doing all the overall process model. That's the important thing there. Okay. Ah, one last remark. Um, you uh, you recognize I call it decision engine. We call it decision management. We don't call it rule engine, and that's actually the new term. So we don't talk about rules anymore. Business rules is more the reedy complex stuff from the past. Um, if you and if you search for rules, that's actually a funny thing to do. You should do that. Um, you find a lot of bad things like the red sign here. The or pay attention, and they don't do that, and there are rules. So rules are, um, you find some, the panda as well, which is um, quite puzzled why the panda is there. Um, but rules are a bad thing. If you have rules, that's a bad thing to do. You have to follow rules. But decisions are a great thing, right? You have a choice. You can do the right choice and these kind of things. So um, that's why we n nowadays focus on the decision management, like because the decision is what you want to do. You need rules in order to do the decision, but the decision is the thing you want to do. And that's a positive thing um, you have out there. Okay, great. So we already tackled um, BPMN. We tackled um, DMN so far. Um, the last thing is about CMMN, 
which I haven't shown yet. So um, what we experience in a lot of projects out there is as soon as the people are starting to use BPMN in order to make these nice little processes and they automate it, at, at this point they normally understand, who, if I do that, I have to follow that process model. I really have to do that. I cannot work around that. So um, if I have like a couple of user tasks in a row, I have to have them in a row. And then we often have discussions like, okay, if I have to do that decisions, I have to do a lot of things. Like these are really good paid guys. Okay, they have to have possibilities to, um, for example, to get some additional documents, to ask their team leads. So um, if you're not looking at car insurance, but if you're looking at life insurance or health insurance, it's a much more complicated thing to do. And this is hard actually to put into BPMN. We did that in the past. So um, what you can do in BPMN is, for example, you have um, so-called event sub-processes. Maybe that's not common to everybody it's with the dotted line here. Um, then you have um, a so-called message start event, um, which is it's dotted again, so it's non-interrupting. That means when I'm in the decide about application task, I can send in a message to additionally, with a parallel flow, basically start that task. So that means when I'm here, I can start these guys um, independently, additionally. That gives some flexibility, right? Because I haven't modeled it in the in the in the flow. Um, and then you can um, this these things are normally you can imagine that by um, showing uh, by 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 basically looking. Uh, into the user interface where you see, um, for example, my application from earlier, I might see what's currently running, but I have the possibility to start additional ac activities um, for this um, certain application. So I have the overview and I, as a human, can decide when I'm looking at it what I should do additionally. But the thing is, um, this gets pretty unhandy in BPMN if you have loads of possibilities, like you don't ha only have three of them, but you have like 100 of them. And these might even be only possible um, with some circumstances, like for health insurance, a lot of things are only possible if you already had some injuries, if you're a um, smoker or a certain age or whatever. So there are a lot of conditions when these things are possible or not. And this is where, where basically the boundary of possibilities for BPMN is. So um, this is where CMMN jumps in, and that was basically the idea from the OMT. So um, when I, in the BPMN process, so in Camona BPM, you can use a call activity there and then refer to um, a CMMN case. CMMN, this is how CMMN looks like. Um, you recognize a lot of the um, activities from BPMN, basically. So um, the overall thing is a, is a so-called, we make that faster, um, a case. So within the case, you have a so-called stage. So the stage is basically, um, yeah, like a like a scope where you're currently in. Um, then you have a couple of tasks. This is what you recognize from BPMN, like a human task. It's not called user task, but it's basically the same. Um, or a process task, which basically refers to a BPMN process again. Um, so that's the easy part. Um, then you have milestones. Milestones are easy to understand as well. So you can reach a milestone at a certain um, point in your case. That's easy. And then you have a couple of things which are more more um, hard to understand. So first thing is you have these so-called sentries. They are pretty interesting. A sentry is basically kind of a guard for an element here. So in a sentry, you can configure a condition. Again, for, for Kamunda, that means Java Unified Expression Language, for example. And within that sentry, um, you can um, configure the condition. In that case, I if the process variable, the case variable, was approved, for example, was written to um, true or false. Okay, so you can relate to data within the case. And then you have these um, so-called, it's so-called on part, but these um, connections here, which says, and I can only reach that milestone if this stage was ended. Okay, so this is not like a sequence flow in BPMN, it's not like an order. It's just um, based on the, uh, the conditions I have here. So as soon as this is ended and approved is true, I reach the milestone approved. 
but I made it more complex here in order to explain the idea. Um, but only if some conditions are true, which mean I don't need to approve that decision. It might be that depending on the, um, yeah, whatever, maybe the car or maybe the um, um, pricing or whatever, um, let's say every, um, every uh, uh, like claim handling, every claim above 2,000 euros needs an uh, additional approval. Then I can add that to the um, conditions here and then I will not reach the milestone, but I will reach um, that user task and that gets activated at that moment. So it's a lot about these conditions. Again, you might already guess that in the background, these sentries might be expression language, might be DMN again. So you can put everything together there. And then there are additional markers like um, the play symbol or these um, hash. Um, the play symbol basically means um, that you can configure if this task is directly started, so it's directly put on your task list, or if it's not started and you have to have to make that manually. And the hashtag basically means I can do that uh, multiple times. So it's a repeating thing. So um, in this case, the approval here could decide that the application decision should be re-evaluated. And that's expressed by that one. So what you can already see is that it's much harder to understand how the case works from what you see in the model. But the other side of the, f or other side of the coin is that um, you have a lot of flexibility to do that in here. Okay, so that adds another tool to the job there. So um, what we basically envision on the, on the platform, on the Kamunda BPM platform, is that we have all of the three standards implemented there, so you can use whatever you need for your job. So we have the BPMN um, part, pretty mature, what I said earlier. We have CMMN, which is in a pretty early stage, and we have DMN, which will be um, implemented in 7.4 release, which will be very, very interesting, I think. Um, so that's what you get on the Camunda BPM platform. And what you, can, what you already saw, we are building tooling for all of that. So you will have the tool chain on the modeling part, on the operating part. You will have, um, like what I said earlier, the very easy engines everywhere. So you can really um, do a lot of things in there. Um, I have architecture slides, so I want to get to that actually before the time is up. Um, yeah, so that's actually from the homepage. So that's basically what's driving us. So um, I'm, yeah, basically going over conferences for the last like five years, a lot, actually talking about workflow. And what I always experience is if you tell the people, oh, we're doing BPM, it's like, ooh, BPM, I used that once, that was pain. And um, it's not like that anymore. So it's really easy to use. It's, it's even fun for a Java developer. So that's actually what we're trying to achieve with all of that. So um, um, yeah, whatever. Um, I showed you all the components that we already tackled. So we have the engine. Um, it's basically based on a relational database. Um, we have the taskless cockpit, we have an admin interface, not that interesting. Uh, we have the modeling part, so we basically tackled all of that. One thing I want to show you at the end is, um, if you look at it from an architecture point of view, so what I showed you so far is, um, you could use the engine as a simple jar. So that's basically what I did here, right? So I just have a Maven dependency, I have the jar, so I can directly start it. Um, you could do the same thing with Spring. So you can start up the engine, the process engine, the um, case engine, the decision engine with Spring. So you can embed that within your own deployment. You can use Spring Boot if you like. So that doesn't matter actually. You can use Drop Wizard or whatever. So you can start that up, embed it into your own thing. Um, what we also have is the integration in the um, application container. And like um, JBoss, in my case, I had Wildfly here, so I have running Wildfly, um, where we already start the engine as service of the container. So when you start the container, it's started. Um, that in Wildfly, it's a module, um, or in JBoss, it's a module. In Tomcats, it's a bootstrap listener, which start up the whole stuff. In um, WebSphere or Glassfish or WebLogic, it's an RAR file and resource adapter, um, which is started up during starting time of the container. And then you can deploy simple VOR or EAR files, just normal deployments. That's actually what I did here, right, with my insurance application. So that builds a normal VOR file. And 
there, I just add the BPMN, DMN, and um, CMMN files, and then they get picked up automatically. They, we scan the class path and are deployed to the um, central engine, which already runs in the application server. And that means you even can do things like having multiple WAR files and within the WAR files having different BPMN models or DMN models, um, but you still could um, reference uh, like in a call activity, like a sub-process, which is maybe a re reusable one, like output management or these kind of things, or a decision you want to reuse over different processes, and the, they can be related, um, can be um, part of a different WAR file, so you can really separate the stuff there. That makes it very easy to use, actually. So that's the environment we normally um, recommend to do. Um, you, if you want to, you can still use it remote, right? So um, you can just put it there, use the REST APIs, and that's it. OK. So I or already showed you that. Um, it's very easy to start that by, um, by API. That's the process application I just showed you. That's not that interesting. So the thing is, if you want to get going, um, go to kamunda.org. That's actually where the open source project is living. Oh, my browser. Don't want to. So if you don't to kamunda.org, you will find the download. If you want to get started, I think the easiest thing is get a distribution so you get the container already with the engine. So um, either Tomcat or Whitefly is a good choice nowadays. Um, that's what you can do. Then go to the documentation. So it's docs.kamunda.org. Maybe go to latest because we revamped all the stuff. So it's much nicer here. And then, for example, you can um, have a lot of the uh, uh, reference guides and these kind of things here. We have a get started guide there. So it's easy um, to get up to speed there, um, which is maybe not that easy to find. Go to network.kamunda.org. They find a lot of material around. Um, for example, um, yeah, like webinars, white papers, I'm in German version, sorry. Um, and that might be interesting for the beginning, like a complete free online training. So if you're interested in that, just register in the network and then you're ready to go. Um, we're doing a lot of um, live meetings. So they are not only in Germany, um, for especially for Belgium or France, would be interesting to find hosts. So if you're thinking, hey, that's great, we, we want to host some such a community event, um, let me know. Yeah, and if you want to have an enterprise edition, we have an enterprise edition, obviously. Um, go to kamuna.com there, if you even find the advantages of the enterprise edition, so you get the SLA-based support and, um, and bug fix backporting and all these kind of things, trainings, consulting, that's basically what we are doing. And if you, if you like, get a poster. We have a couple of, not much actually, left at the booth. Um, otherwise, um, give us your email. We can um, send you over some copy, either hard copy via snail mail or, or even the PDF version. So we have a poster with the whole example. Um, we have our book there. So if you want to get a free copy, just drop our booth. We have, a, we have a pile of books. Not that much, actually, but a couple of them are left. And yeah, the thing is, that's um, for me, always important. It's, it's a really cool thing, right? It's not um, like a black box BPM suite. It's not a hard thing to do. It's really, it's fun in, in some way to really to do it. So um, yeah, just get going. I um, think that's it. So thank you guys for, um, for listening. We maybe have time for no time left. Okay. If you have any questions, I'm at the booth. <laughs>